Hello friends, welcome back. This is part of Azure Tips and Tricks video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we can automatically manage the Azure Blob lifecycle. This is the lifecycle management of the Azure Blob. So this video is going to be short and crispy and useful. So without delay, come let's get started. All right, so I've logged into the portal. In order to log into the portal, you should go to portal.azure.com with your credentials login. That's what I have done. And if I go and search for storage account here, you will end up to see this kind of a logo. Click on it. And I already have a couple of storage accounts. So in one of the previous video, I showed you how you can move the blob containers from one storage account to a different storage account using the Azure Storage Explorer. So what we did is in the previous video, we moved stuff from here to here. So which means if I go here, there are containers and the uh, content here. Now, lifecycle management is basically you're moving your uh, content from one tire to a different tire in order to save the cost. Okay, so what will happen is let's take a realistic example, right? So let's say your application is there where users are uploading uh, continuously on a daily basis. Let's say they are uploading some reports. Okay, now the reports are viewed only uh, only one week. It's not used at all after that. So now sitting, now all of this content sitting in one place, okay, which is the default tire, is the hot tire, it's going to incur cost over the time. So the idea is to use the lifecycle management that is by default available in the Azure container, like the storage account, so that you move the blobs from one tire to a different tire. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, so when initially this uh, storage account came, there were only three tires, hot, cool, and archive. Recently, there is uh, two more, there's one more thing that they have included. So right now, the number of tires that we have is the hot, cool, cold, and archive, right? So let's take a look at the difference, okay? So when your data is stored in an online access tire, like hot or cool or cold, users can access it immediately. The hot tire is the best choice for data that is in active use. The cool and cold tire is ideal for data that is accessed less frequently, but that still must be available for reading and writing. That's the whole idea behind this. Okay. Now, if you look at this um, example, hot tire has higher cost the more you access, but it's immediately accessible. So frequently accessed content should be in the hot tire and that's the default one. Cool and cold is like infrequently accessed. The difference between cool and cold is cool is 30 days and cold is 90 days. Archive is like at least 180 days you don't touch it. Like that's the whole concept, okay? So what we are going to do is we are going to use the lifecycle management to move data from one tire to a different tire so that we save some cost. Saving cost is ultimate goal for us as a developer as well as for the organization. So any data that is there in the storage account, if you don't want to use, if you're not using your application is not using, it is a good practice to automatically move the data from one tire to a different tire. All right. So that is what we are going to see. So back to the Azure portal. And if you see, if you go to the storage account and in the left side, if you keep scrolling down, there's something called data management because we're managing the data. It's called data management under that lifecycle management. Click on lifecycle management and currently there is no rule set. So we're going to set a rule here. Click on add a rule and let's give a name to the rule. All right. So I set a rule name called move one week blob old blobs. Now, what you can do is you can either apply this everything or a uh, limit blobs with the filter so you can limit meaning if you wanted to apply this rule only for a particular container you can do or uh, you know like that so those kind of rules so i set it for the blob types and subtype is the base blob i'm not going to use any of these uh, moment so next and there's a default condition here that's the minimum one condition should be there if base blob where last modified or created last modified is more than see more than seven days then what do you want to do like i said there are four different things right this is cool cold archive that's the other three tasks because the, the, the default tire is the hot that's why hot is not showing here so you move from hot to any of these things or you wanted to delete the files if it is not at all used 
that's also possible generally in organization you know those kind of files will be uh, there will be separate servers to you know pull the data and put it into a different disk and then they will even delete the blobs so what we can do is we can say hey i move that to the cold storage cold storage it's uh, see 90 days it's a first one is 30 days this is 90 days so i wanted to move there next and then block prefix like i said the rule based thing is what we are setting so you can specify to which blob you wanted to do so if i say um based on the block that we have uh, let's say this is applicable only for here okay so for the tech uh, container is what it is applicable and then blob index match it can also have extra filters and um, you know if you do an add the rule is set and once the rule is uh, like it's more than seven days it's gonna move all these things into the hot air so how do you know that's uh, going to hot air so if you go to containers if you go here okay this if you even click here or don't even click this let me show you the see the here itself it's showing it's a hot inferred once this is moved to the cold here the access there will change so that's how you know okay so this is what uh, we have seen in this video so this video is all about knowing the lifecycle management of the Azure storage blobs. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is part of Azure Trips and Tricks. If you like this video, do put your wonderful comments in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel. Share this with your friends and uh, more videos are on the way. Stay tuned and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!